This is an excerpt from Walter Russell's book, The Universal One. And in it, he has a section called Concerning the Soul, where he talks about the nature of the soul and the cycle of life and death. And I just wanted to read it for you. I find it profound and it may give you some comfort. He says, Man is ever concerned regarding his soul and its habitation after death. Man need have no concern. Man's soul is but the memory of the evolving idea of man. Out of the soul, the body is again born. The soul is but the record of man's thinking. The evolving idea of man cannot forever be held in suspense, in inertia. The soul of a dead man is but the record of a man asleep for a while, awaiting the renewal of his body. The first part of sleep is but a centrifugal, decentrative reaction to a centripetal, concentrative period of action. It is the expanding, dissipative, non-creative impulse of thinking, just as wakefulness is the contracting, generative, creative impulse. It is the period of predominantly exothermal, electronegative discharge when the body degenerates in preponderance to its generation. Later during sleep, the centripetal concentrative action begins to accumulate until it becomes sufficiently preponderant to cause the state of what is known as wakefulness. In the same way, during the first part of the day, the contracting generative impulse is in pre-preponderance, but later fatigue shows that the expanding, non-creative impulse of thinking is increasing until it in turn becomes predominant and causes another period of sleep. And so the pendulum swings. As in all other phenomena of motion, sleep and wakefulness are simultaneous in the expression of their opposition, but preponderantly one or the other in sequence. Just so with life and death. From the moment of birth, we begin to die. Generation of that which man knows as life merely predominates until that which he knows as death takes its turn in orderly sequence. Death is just a longer sleep than the daily sleep. The difference is in the duration of the sleep. Concerning Reincarnation Death is a life period of sleep for the total bodily regeneration, just as the daily sleep is for the partial bodily regeneration. Regeneration of the soul is reincarnation of the body. The chemistry of the soul, of all idea, is registered in the master tones known as the inert gases. The inert master tones of an octave of the elements contains a complete and exact record of every effect of motion within its octave. The soul of man contains a complete and exact record of every action and reaction of thinking man. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. Creation is just a swing of the cosmic pendulum between sleep and sleep, between awakening and awakening, and one follows the other as night follows the day and the day again follows the night. While sleeping for a night, man does not cease to be, nor does he fear to sleep, for he knows that sleep is beautiful, and he will awaken at the dawn of a new day. Man fears to die, for he knows not what the dark sleep of death will bring. He knows not that death is but a longer and more beautiful sleep from which he will awaken with a newly regenerated body to begin once more his periosity of growth at the dawn of another new day of life. Man fears the hobgoblins of primitive man's concept of punishment of the soul for the sins of the body. He fears the dark sleep of death with its terrors, much as a child which has been frightened by ghost stories fears the dark with its same imaginary terrors. With new comprehension, man can eliminate the imaginary hobgoblins and fears from his declining years and go to the sleep of his disappearance as form in peace. In disappearance, man does not cease to be. 
In his disappearing, the idea of man does not discontinue. As the day disappears only to reappear in its proper periodic interval, so man must reappear. All appearances and disappearances are simply periodic. Also are all reappearances periodic. Appearances and disappearances are but moving points in the cycle of mind. In this universe of motion, creating things do not pause at any point. There are no created things. There are but creating things ever integrating, ever moving, ever evolving in the integration and the assembling of the idea of themselves. No form of life has been created. It is creating. Nothing has been. All things are being. Evolving idea into form is a positive action requiring the creative intelligence of imagination. A man who only has great knowledge has a negative possession. Poor he is indeed. A man who has great imagination has a positive dynamic possession. Rich he is, for knowledge is within him, and of a certainty he shall find it. Knowledge of existence is not acquired from without. It is recollected from within. When man shall know the language of the Universal One, of whom he is a part, then shall he know the voice of the Universal One. The still small voice within Universal Man speaks to him in the language of light, in words of tones in the speed of light. Within the heart of man, the silent voice has forever asked, Who am I? And the voice forever answers, I am of the universal passion of creation. I came from God. I am of God. I am soul, record of idea. Where God is, I am. Where I am, there God is. Within man, the voice of ages demands, what am I? And the familiar voice answers, I am of the body of God, born of his substance. God is mind. I am mind. God is truth. I am truth. God is love, I am love. God is life, I am life. God is light, I am light. God is power, I am power. What God is, I am. What he commands, I command. My purpose is his purpose. God lives in me. My inheritance is from God and of God. He gives all to me. He withholds nothing. The divinity of me is thine and mine. It is that which is recorded within the soul of me. It is the Holy Spirit within the sanctuary of me.